What is going on, everybody, and welcome to another weekly update. And what I like to do in these videos, provide you guys some upcoming earnings, some upcoming events to get you prepared for the week ahead. If that sounds like something you're interested in, consider subscribing, as I do also provide some technical analysis typically on Sundays to provide you entries and entry entries and exits for uh, good stocks that I am watching. Uh, you can also catch me out on X at Hemi137 as I do provide a daily mar marks uh, pulse on the market. If I could speak this morning. So uh, what is going on, everybody? I hope everybody's well. Uh, this particular video, uh, I do provide events. Uh, I am going to go through some of the events, but I think it's important to understand that we need to start paying attention. What are the next steps? Uh, we've talked up to this point that inflation wasn't more concerned anymore. What we were ultimately, this is uh, several months back, that we were ultimately waiting for rate cuts. It did take a long time. A lot of people were saying that Fed needed to cut rates way back in the spring, and we still haven't seen that. Uh, but Powell was alluding to in the beginning of la or the, towards the end of last year that there would be rate cuts. Uh, but here it is September and we haven't even seen one rate cut. Although he said that it is time for them to adjust policy, we have now come to that uh, essential pivot point in the market. Now, again, the next couple of weeks are going to be very, very important. And I want to start laying out those steps on what we need to be watching as uh, I've focused on what we need to be watching up to this point. And I'll continue to do that. So before we get too much into that, what I want to do is let's go ahead and dive into last week's recap. Again, there wasn't really a lot going on. Uh, there is a core uh, PPI that came out. But again, in my opinion, inflation is still very much alive and well. And it will continue to be very much alive and well. And this is why the Fed haven't cut rates to this point. But we did have a core CPI. Headline inflation fell to 2.5. Uh, core rose to 3.2. Again, um, you have to understand that inflation is not completed. And many times I've posted the report on the core inflation about how certain items, especially because people are, they can't really splurge on anything other than potentially get the grocery store. And even, again, you were talking about, you know, the top you know, 10%, 5% that own everything. There are also uh, shopping at Walmart, and that was your biggest one of your biggest aha moments that things are really bad. People are trying to save every dollar that they can because the environment is is very hard, especially when you got a lot of hidden costs that people aren't aware of. Uh, when you buy a new vehicle, uh, the insurance has gone through the roof. Your home, if you own a home or multiple homes. Uh, that insurance for homes in certain locations are even surpassing that of the mortgage, uh, which is absurd. And then you have uh, potential HOA fees that are also increasing massively uh, year over year as well. Uh, so those particular things aren't really taken into account when you're looking at these. But with that being said, we are getting to a point since Jackson Hole that we've seen unemployment skyrocket. We've been talking about this for many times and the manipulation that happens in these reports that it's essentially uh, siloed and broken down and things are stripped out to essentially try to, again, paint a narrative uh, on whatever narrative that may be and then plant seeds on why that narrative is playing out when, in fact, it's not. I've always talked about the underlying truth is the banking system and the manipulation and the lobbying that goes on in how that plays into politics and ultimately uh, there's always a narrative trying to be driven so with that being said uh, and i've talked about this too about how you can also look at uh, you know if you do follow the narrative you can get a lot of tax breaks that way as well uh, so that's something to look at it's not something i'm going to get into on this channel but it's a it's a good uh something there's plenty of books out there to read about that stuff but i'm not getting into that with this channel this is more of a a stock and a general pulse on the market uh, channel here. So with that being said, next steps. What are we doing now, now that we had the core? Uh, this week, uh, we are, I'm kind of diving in a little bit um, to this upcoming events here. I'll go ahead and state this first. So this upcoming week is going to be a very big week. Despite what the market is pricing in, the, the market priced in a lot last week, like the end of the world last week because of core uh, dramatically went outside the expectations, uh, it would have been really bad. And it could have been brutally bad to where the, the Fed couldn't even think, consider about cutting 
Uh, and I think we're still going to see that play out. But Wednesday is going to be a very, very big day this week. We have interest rate decisions. And since Jackson Hole, after Powell essentially stated uh, that it's our time to pivot, uh, you're going to have to realize that he's going to have to tap the brakes when he is doing this. And you better be prepared for inflation to start rising. With that being said, on Wednesday, uh, we will have the interest rate decision come out. I'm expecting a, a 25 point basis move. Uh, some people are anticipating the, the odds have gone up that it may be a 50 point basis move. We have to understand that October has nothing scheduled as of right now. So you have a whole month. If we just do a 25 point cut, you have to understand, I keep talking about this and reiterating about this. It will take about six months for any re interest rate decision that happens this week for it to make a full impact because you are waiting for loans to mature. You're waiting for companies uh, to essentially need to get new loans that they're going to uh, or need to get new loans for the business, whether for whatever reason that may be uh, for new development or whatever the case. Uh, then they'll get in six months when their loan comes to maturity, they can get uh, better uh, interest rates at that point. But 25 points is nothing. And 25 points is more so is this really what we want to do or is this really we want to see what a 25 point increase is going to start, how that's going to impact inflation and understand that as soon as you start letting off on rates, then you start uh, dealing with inflation. But again, like I've stated, what we've seen on the last Jackson Hole, just before the last Jackson Hole meeting, we got numbers stating that unemployment is through the roof and that it's more than just a, a 818,000 uh, downward revision, that it could be well over a million and they're still revising it down. Being said, uh, on Wednesday, we will also have Chair Powell, as always, whenever there's an interest rate decision, he will come out and field questions 30 minutes after that report drops. So at 2.30 Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday, Powell will be fielding questions and he is going to be grilled because he has to have a reason why he is cutting. And he's already kind of greasing the skids with the job numbers. That was one of his concerns. He said he had to keep an eye on that that if for some reason these interest rates would start affecting employment, that they would have to adjust rates at that point. But again, still keeping in mind that inflation is still a concern. And even though they, people want to go out there and mainstream media want to say it's been defeated, it is not. It's still very much a concern for the Fed. And I've, I've stated this, even if you look back at uh, pre-pandemic, things are still high double digit uh, inflation on a lot of really important aspects. And again, understand, yes, there's deflation in a lot of other aspects because people just don't have the excess cash right now. But the problem is, is people don't have savings. The problem is people are skipping meals. The problem is, is there's a massive amount of delinquencies going on. And when I talk about this and reflect this back to 2007, you have to look how 2007, 2008 played. Right after Jackson Hole in 2007, the Fed cut rates 50 points in September. And then in November and December, he did 20, they essentially did two 25 point basis move cuts uh, leading into the new year, 2008, where they started panicking and doing massive rate cuts uh, around that March, February, March time period. And then that essentially led into uh, extreme panic. Uh, in uh, essentially September, November, December of 2008, uh, which essentially was the bottom of uh, that financial crisis for the markets. And then the market recovered after that. And then obviously it took a couple of years for the housing market to recover after that. But obviously we are fo more focused on the stock market here and understand that it's you're going to price in a recession again average recession is about 42 percent again you're dealing with historical data here that you haven't seen since the great financial crisis and since the great depression now being said all that being said yesterday you had essentially the ceo of jp morgan and jd diamond come out and essentially say that he expects things to be worse than a recession I've been talking about this. The data sets are worse than you have ever seen in a lot of aspects. And 
again, if you are in a recession longer than six months, it is essentially defined as a depression. The world is in a depression at this point. Whether you want to believe that or not, whether you want to believe mainstream media or not, there is a reason why uh, they try to have a utopic view. They're not going to tell you when you're going through it, because if you lose all hope, there will be chaos. And so with that being said, at this point, what we're really looking at is uh, we want to see the size of the rates that's going to hit us here in uh, this week on Wednesday. That's going to kind of determine where the Fed's head is at. And I want you to really focus on the size of the cuts over the next couple months. And that is really, again, because because of the rate cuts, there has to be a reason why there are rate cuts. And again, if it's a 50 point, it's a 75. Uh, again, I talked about 50 point is a more committed interest rate decision. 75 and 100 points are more of a, uh, oh man, we've messed up and we need to hurry up and start correcting this quickly like they did when they were increasing rates because they waited too long to start increasing rates and then it caused a massive amount of inflation. And on the same token, you are dealing, you've been dealing with some stagflation. That's why it's been prolonged for as long as it has. And on the same token, you want an administration that doesn't want to be blamed for essentially a complete crash. So they've been spending a trillion dollars over 90, every 90 days to uh, essentially falsify the numbers and bring the numbers up so it doesn't look like things are as bad as they actually are and tell you that you're in this utopic economy uh, when nobody can get a job and people are working two full-time jobs as of right now. You need to understand because of the, the lag effect on interest rates and waiting for loans to mature, that at this point, things on this first rate cut, things are going to get worse over the next six months before they actually get better. Just because we're pivoting doesn't mean anything. It means things will get a lot worse in the next six months, uh, and then we'll start recovering from that point. So six months out from this week, things should actually start recovering, but expect things to get worse. Expect things to start accelerating double, triple, quadruple what you've seen thus far. And then we can take it from that point. So when we, when we again look at 2007 and looking at the rate decisions, um, I, again, am expecting only a 25. Would not be surprised if I do see a 50 to see them try to play out the 2007 uh, aspect of this whole thing. You have to understand that uh, it was Yellen who was in the same position as Chair Powell uh, in 2007, which she is now treasurer, and understand that again she came out she's been talking a couple of different times over this past week saying that how things are strong and resilient and even one of the fed members came out this week uh there's a lot of uh new banking standards there's some other big news that dropped this week with um essentially the capital they had to have on hand and that scared essentially uh the banks this week so not only do you have the unemployment now you have the bank uh, capital uh, reserves that need to be on hand that's scaring the banks. The banks have sold off heavy on Tuesday. So you got two big, big concerns. Again, unemployment and banks are in trouble. You can't continue to ride interest rates high like this. But again, on the same token, you are in stagflation because if you start decreasing rates too rapidly, one, you're going to draw a panic if you do it too quickly. Second, if you do it too fast, inflation is going to come roaring back uh, so bad, it's going to be worse than what we've seen about a year and a half ago uh, when we we're looking at the 9% interest rates. And that's not even true inflation, right? And so with all that being said, this week is going to be a very, very big week, despite what they are pricing in. You have to understand the impact and what Powell is going to say is extremely going to matter. Now, not only is it an interest rate decision, but it's going to have projections. Again, the market it gets more volatile when there's projections, even though they're not accurate. Uh, but ultimately understand um, because there's a lot of events that can occur before that next essentially rate decision. Too, but nonetheless, it will still it will be more volatile uh, with the, these projections that go out this week. So with all that being said, what are our next steps? So given what the size of the rate cut is uh, on Wednesday, we want to start really watching your oil prices and core inflation are going to really matter. It's not saying, uh, again, you're not going to really get a big read on it because it's going to take some time. Powell wants to get quarter on quarter uh, inflation rates 
Uh, so he may just ease into it again because he's very concerned about inflation rates. A lot of people are predicting uh, that he will have uh, will eventually hit about 100 point uh, interest rate cut by the end of the year is what they're saying. And these are a lot of analysis. Again, they've their analysis is garbage, in my opinion. <laughs> Uh, but again, they, they try to feed the narrative. Also, you have to remember they are on payroll. Uh, they play for the house, and so they have to feed the narrative. And this is why you're not going to get accurate information on any of these things because, again, the house always wins even in the stock market. So they're going to feed a narrative uh, to keep you off, essentially off, off your toes is what they're trying to do. So with that being said, that is our, our biggest thing we want to be watching is the interest rate decisions and how inflation is playing out in that way. Again, the market will correct and start pricing in a recession because of the bad news. If you reflect back to when we started increasing rates on how nasty and choppy that was, you can expect more of that, more bigger drops to the downside. Uh, when Powell has to come out and say, why is doing a 50 point basis move? Why is doing a 75 point basis move in the market being scared? And rightfully so. So this is why we want to start watching oil prices and core inflation. Another big play I am watching is bonds, especially when we start getting larger cuts uh, that's going to start shooting up the bond market. And so those are the, some of the big things. Oil prices, uh, if they start rising, commodity prices start rising because uh, interest rates are down. Uh, OPEC tried to come out and try to save oil over the past couple of weeks, and they were unsuccessful as oil continues to sell off. Uh, another big concern and understand why they are starting to cut rates. You have oil prices that are, are screaming down. You have unemployment rising. You have bank. Uh, the amount of uh, stress on the banks is humongous right now. Uh, so you have to understand that they have no choice but to cut now. Uh, they will do a 25 point basis move and then we're going to have to see and see what the projections are again expect a lot of volatility this week on what's going on and it could get really nasty really quickly so i've talked about this point the market's just gone pretty much up since we've cut and it's normal for the cycle that's so why i said you got to essentially uh learn about these different cycles. There's a yearly cycle, and then there's these normal uh, correction cycles that happen all the time. Again, there's other events that typically occur uh, throughout the essentially the 10 year span where you have these massive uh, turnovers like you're currently about ready to have. And then ultimately understand that, um, again, what happened with the pandemic stuff, that was a once in a lifetime type of episode. And yes, there was a massive correction, but then we printed 40% of the money supply that's what's essentially caused all this. This is why we're getting historically bad data. And I'll ultimately said we haven't been, our yield curve hasn't been this inverted essentially since the Great Depression. Things are that bad. And again, with uh, the CEO of JPM coming out and saying that and reiterating what I've been talking about for a while now uh, and understand, well, it's going to be an event. They'll play it out to an event. This is why I hold a lot of weight on events because one event will start changing or dictating. You can start seeing when they start committing more to a specific narrative and understand that because they just want to get out of this administration, uh, or they want to get out of this election cycle. Once they get out of the election cycle, then it's game on. It doesn't matter who's sitting in the chair in February. At that point, we can start panicking rate cuts, and then uh, the whole market corrects, and the whole thing will get offloaded, and it will be blamed on whoever's sitting in office. So with that being said, we want to be watching those those key things. Again, rate the rate sizes, oil prices, bonds, uh, oil and prices, uh, oil and bonds, I think will be some of the biggest plays over the next couple of months as essentially uh, the market starts to correct. Uh, so you do keep that in mind. I also may understand they're pricing in a lot in options right now because they don't want people to capitalize on a massive correction in the markets. You do have to keep that in mind. Uh, they're trying to get this because so many people are now in the market that people uh, they're trying to get people to lose money, uh, and so they they price in so much. When I talk about, when I joke about, they price in the end of the world because if the market goes down 100 points and they price in 130 points, uh, you may have tons of puts uh, to the downside, and they, they none of them will get it because they, again they price in so much uh, that it will just burn your cash. And so you have to be uh, like deep in the money to even make anything off, and even still at the point it's not even worth it. It's it's better to to play opposite plays like your your oil and your bond plays that will skyrocket up because there's not as much uh, volatility priced into those uh, particular options so 
with that being said, uh, upcoming events, obviously monetary policy this week, it's economic rejections. So it will be a lot more volatile. Uh, the next core isn't until October 14th. Also understand again, the next core, or yeah, the, in October, there will be no monetary policy. So that will be important. Uh, the next upcoming earnings will start off, kick off here in about, uh, about three weeks. We should start getting bank earnings. Again, those will be on Friday, so that should be roughly around the second week of October. On that Friday, we should start getting bank earnings. Uh, and again, expect them to get a lot worse until we start getting rate cuts. The earnings will continue to get worse and worse and worse as we continue to prolong the rates until we start getting rate cuts. And then ultimately understand that this is another thing to keep in mind. When we start doing rate cuts, a lot of these companies, these well-known names, will eventually start to gain traction after roughly about a quarter. So between now and March of next year will be prime, in my opinion, will be a very prime time, more so probably next uh, March, but be really prime time to start uh, buying stocks or crypto, whatever the case is, in some very well-known companies that have been taking a beating over the past couple of years uh, because, it will, like I said, it will get worse. But once we start getting those rate decisions in, that will start improving the environment and these, these a lot of these companies will start doing better uh, because of that and it will start being slow and incremental. Uh, but again, you have to get through the fear. You have to price in a recession. Don't let the, the, the fear of recession be aware just to be DCAing on good stocks over the next couple months. The next six months are gonna be extremely important. And yes, expect things to start selling heavy over the next six months, but be prepared. This is your window. This is your opportunity, in my opinion. None of this is financial advice. This is how the cycles play out. We have to get through, and that's a big thing. Another uh, big thing I've heard about too, especially with housing, is that people are waiting till after the election for whatever reason because they think more buyers are going to come in. So this is why people aren't uh, cutting the price down on houses as well. So there, there is more supply. There is more housing price cuts that we're seeing, but I think we're really going to get flooded by next year. And that takes more time uh, to play out. But ultimately, the market is, is very dynamic and can price the stuff in a lot faster than the economy can. And then once those, uh, the economy starts recovering, uh, which like I've talked about, we're going to start focusing on those steps. All the Essentially, all the, the companies that we've been watching to this point, your essentially Lowe's, your Home Depot's, your Starbucks, your McDonald's, your fast food, your restaurants, all these ones, uh, your Freightliners, right? Uh, UPS and FedEx. You're going to want to start watching all these pulses uh, when the market starts to turn. We start doing rate cuts. You want to focus on them. When they start getting really good earnings and when they start exploding, that tells you that things are in the right direction, that things are starting to turn. That is your hint. So exactly the reverse engineering, what we just went through. And when I was pointing out specific earnings, you want to look at those specific earnings again when this thing starts to turn around. And that will be your first indicator when you're looking at these earnings that things are actually way better uh, than what is, is being projected out there. So you have to understand you have already been living through this. And the next step was to wait for the rate cuts. Now we're starting to get rate cuts uh, again. It's going to be a battle. There's going to be a lot of up and down. You're going to get another year, like I said, of uh, that 2022, uh, where you had massive rallies up and massive crashes down because, again, the Fed are going to have to continue to cut. And if inflation comes back, it's going to be extremely volatile and extremely choppy. Uh, so do keep that in mind. I'm expecting something very similar to that coming into 2025. And when we start dealing with these rate cuts again, because it's tied to um, – some uh, again bad event that's essentially occurring so with that being said unexpected there are expected moves again not too concerned this week the market i guess in the general index still very high but again what could have played out over the past week with the core if the core for some reason uh was really high uh that would have been highly concerning again it's whatever the headline news is that so if that wasn't extremely bad uh then it's not too out of expectations. So the market didn't really interpret that as too bad, uh, but it's still 100 points is still well over uh, average. Again, average is around 50, 60, so still well over average, but it's not 130 points like it was last week. 
Uh, so there was more of a concern if inflation was still extremely too high, that would there was no way we could cut. Like, how could we cut? We'd have to probably go until uh, November before we even cut. So, and there's no guarantee that it's supposed to be this week. Although, uh, there's the odds are still very, very in favor that they would at least provide a 25 point basis move. Again, this is why there's so much weight on this week. This is going to be the biggest pivotal week we've had in a long time uh, since essentially our pause of la since last year. And now at this point, we are moving into the next stages. And so we have to be aware of what those next stages look like and what to be watching and to be ahead of everything before it actually starts to play out. So um, and then Tesla is still very high. Expecting that to, they got a, a big meeting here in about a month. Um, so their robo taxi stuff is going on. I expect them to explode here, coming here shortly. So just keep that in mind. And then you got Boeing still very high. Boeing got some a lot of really bad news. Uh, continues to have more bad news. Talking about strikes uh, that might get more volatile. And then banks are very high this week again at six. Again, because the the capital restrictions on what they need to have on essentially on on tap essentially, and so again, uh, the the whole market will follow the banks. The banks are obviously the underlying infrastructure of everything. Uh, all these businesses need to go through banks to be able to continue to grow, and so you have to keep that in mind. So if the banks start to really fail this week, uh, again, uh, that will start triggering across everything else. Uh, the interest rate cuts are great for tech, but on the same token, uh, again, if the whole market starts to crumble uh, because of what's going on, you have to understand that that's it's going to be a very bad sign as well. So, again, um, thank you for watching. Uh, go ahead and drop a like. And ultimately, remember, right now we're starting to focus on next steps. We need to know, again, what the size is of the rate cuts, and then we really need to start paying attention where things are headed from this point. Uh, again, I, it may not, it's not going to be just a clear cut to start cutting and that's the way things are going to be. Again, if inflation starts to rise, they may have to pause for a while and they may have to increase rates again. We don't know, but it's going to get extremely volatile once, once we get past the election, once all this stuff happens. Um, to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if we rally in the back half of the year. Although um, now that the narrative is changing Powell's going to have to drop some information about what's currently going on and why they are cutting. Uh, so again, why Wednesday is going to be important and what he states because it's an open forum. He's going to have to answer a lot of really tough questions. And then here in about, I think, a week or two, he has to go in front of Congress uh, and he's going to have to tell them why, uh, what she gets grilled there on why he has to cut. And then you'll get more details there. So the next couple of weeks are going to be really, really um full of news in the, the the understanding and information that we need to move into that next stage so if you made it this far thank you very much go ahead and drop a like share this and i will see you guys later